What's up, math fans? I'm only gonna do two problems in this video, so you think it's gonna be quick, but you actually have to know a lot, a lot of background information first. So if you're not sure, please check all these prerequisites. First of all, you have to be good at multiplying binomials. Some people teach it as FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. Then you have to be good at the opposite of FOIL, which is what I call the sum product method. So if someone asks you to factor, they would say, well, how did I get this? What are the factors of this? What times what is x squared plus 10x plus 16? And you have to know how to use the sum product method. What I mean by that is um, sum is 10 and the product is 16. So you're thinking of two numbers whose sum is 10 and product is 16. And the way I taught it was you're thinking of the factors of 16. That's either 4 and 4, 16 and 1, or 8 and 2. Um, of those three choices, you go with the pair that has a sum of 10. So my only choice is 8 and 2. So I have x plus 8 and x plus 2, and that's a summary of the sum product method. All right. Here, you also have to be familiar with dots, which is a, a special version of the sum product method. If I want to factor this, x squared minus 144, that's a difference of two squares, so that's x plus 12 and x minus 12. You also need to be comfortable with finding the GCF, the greatest common factor. So actually, the first thing you do when you factor anything, this, this, or this, is you look for a greatest common factor. Is there a number or, va or variable that goes into all the terms that I see? Well, I see a 2x, I see a 6, so I know that 2 goes into both. I factor out the 2, and I ask myself, if I factored out or divided out a 2, what's left? x plus 3 would be left. And if you're not sure, you distribute, and you get back where you started, so you know you're correct. You've got to be familiar with all these ways of factoring, all right? Then I'm going to teach you something new called a rainbow. So, what are we factoring today is a quadratic. What have we been factoring this whole time? These are all quadratics. What's a quadratic? When the highest exponent is a 2. It's considered a quadratic. This is a quadratic expression. Soon you'll get to quadratic equations where there's an equal sign. Right now, no equal sign. You're not solving. It's just an expression. All right, what else? What do you mean by a is not equal to 1? Well, the sum product method only worked when the first term was x squared, meaning 1x squared. There was no number in front of the x squared. A, a was 1. Some product method only works when a is 1, because it's very easy. I put an x and an x. I don't have to worry about numbers there. <clears throat> but here, think about the sum product method. Can I think of two numbers that multiply to 20 and add to 19? Let's see. 20 and 1? No. 5 and 4? No. 10 and 2? No. Uh, there isn't the sum product method fails here. You know why it fails? Because a is not 1. First, term, the leading coefficient is a 3, not a 1. Some product doesn't work. It's definitely not a difference of two squares. And if you look at all three terms, there's no GCF. It's actually the first thing you should do is look for a GCF. There is no GCF. No greatest common factor. Three doesn't go into all of them. Two doesn't go into all of them. There's none. So you got to learn something new. It's called a rainbow. Here are the steps. Copy down the steps. I'm going to show you the steps. Only reason I call it a rainbow is because I'm drawing a line from 3 to 20, which kind of looks like an actual rainbow. It's the only reason I call it a rainbow. Um, some people use different, different methods. This is my method. I think it's foolproof. 3 times 20, 60. Everything else is going to fall down simpler. x squared plus 19x plus 60. Okay, So that 3 went into the rainbow. Multiplied by 20 became 60, and now it's gone. Now a is actually 1. The leading coefficient is 1. So now I can use the sum product method to factor. So you should be thinking, what are the factors of 60 that also add to 19? 60 and 1, no. 10 and 6, no. Uh, 20 and 3, no. 15 and Excuse me, 15 and uh, 4, 15, 30, 45, 60, great. So this is going to be x plus 15 and x plus 4, got it. Here's the magic of the rainbow, that a that disappeared comes back. See when I said multiply a times c, this is your a3, that's your c20, 
Now the A that disappeared, the three that disappeared, comes back. Uh, so I'm gonna rewrite it here. Three comes back as the coefficient in both spots. Now, I'm almost done, one more step. Divide by the GCF. So I'm gonna look at this thing. Is there a GCF here? Yes. What goes into three X and will end 15? Three goes into both of them, divide by three. Is there a GCF here? Is there a number that goes into three and four? Besides one, no, leave it alone. Now if I divide by three, three X divided by three is X, 15 divided by three is five. This thing is gonna drop straight down, three X plus four drops down, and this is my answer. Don't believe me, check. How do you check? How do you check? Use FOIL. So I really hope that you already saw the video on multiplying binomials, okay? Do it, quick, you will see that it works, that you get the original question back. If you check and you don't get it back, somewhere along the way you made a mistake in Rainbow, or there was a GCF in the beginning and you didn't take it out. Always factor out the GCF first, all right? If you get it, great. If not, stick around. I'll try to do this one a little quicker. Here's my rainbow. I'll even do it in pink so it looks more like a colorful rainbow. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6, so I'm going to drop down x squared minus x minus 6. Now remember there's a 1 here, 1 in front of the x. So what are the factors of 6 that also add up to negative 1? Remember there's a negative 6, so it's 3 and 2, 6 and 1. Hmm. x minus 3, x plus 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, that's what I wanted. I want my bigger number to be negative, to match the middle sign. Next step, bring the two back, the two that disappeared, bring it back. Put it here as the coefficient and here as the coefficient. See, I left space, I knew it was coming. Divide by GCF, is there a number that goes into two and three? No. Is there a number that goes into two and two? Yes. Divide by two, whatever the GCF is. This is gonna drop down, 2x minus three, and this cancels out, leaving me with x plus one. Don't believe me, do the check, it works. You're welcome, thanks for watching, see ya.